All right, so I have a little mailbag segment thing. I just had some post arrive today. This is going to be the most interesting part. Um, I already had, I already opened this one up um, before I even started. So it's just a bunch of capacitors older from RS components. These are for the um, Roden Swartz um, audio signal generators, which I'm repairing at the moment. Um, so I'll just put those one side, I'll sort of shove them in there anyway. I'm not quite sure what else I've got in here at the moment. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still sick. Hoping it goes away soon so I'll get better work anyway. Don't want to give it to the rest of the people I work with. Okay, a bunch of little terminators, uh, terminators, joiners. Needed some of those the other day. I didn't have any, so I bought a bunch of those, 100 of them. Nice and simple. More capacitors, nothing particularly exciting. 1000 US 50 volts and some more 50 volt 470 UF. So I was waiting for them to turn up as well. So I need I a selection of those for the um, Roden Sports. I've got two of them there, which I'm, you've probably seen in the videos for, which I'm in the process of repairing. I've got most of the repair work done, but I do want to recap them as well. But I just want to get things working properly before I do that. So I introduce any other problems. <coughs> oh look, some more connectors. These took ages, I ordered these ages ago. Um, right angle end to UHF. The PL259. Be right. It's O249, I believe when it was over 249. Um the work for this. But I ended up doing a BNC instead, so anyway, good now. Done. I'm not quite sure what required that. It's really hard hearing things. Next thing, this is where it gets a little more interesting, hopefully. Let's see what's in here. Pretty well sealed up anyway. I might have to put this on the floor for you to see it. But, uh, no. Oh yeah, it's, it's this is bloody packaging man. Fuck. Awesome packaging. I don't know what the hell I do with it, but it really protects stuff really well. This is from uh, eBay, obviously. And it goes via their um, global shipping program that gets packaged in this stuff. And this is awesome packaging, man. Things don't seem to get damaged once it's inside there. Hard bit, it's going to be getting it out. Hold on a second. I should pause this and come back to it once I get the thing out of the box. Okay, I managed to extract it from the packaging. It's a uh, fluke multimeter. I was actually bidding on a few of these online and um, one I really wanted to get was actually in Germany and I got out bid and it got quite expensive but it's, it looked in really good condition and it was known to be working and stuff like that so it's worth trying to do it and the postage is really cheap but um, fortunately someone else was had to determined to get that as I was so the price got quite high anyway I managed to get this one instead which looks like it's in fairly good condition at least on the pictures it's supposed to be working, but still sold as untested. And the pictures look fairly good. So, uh, did the pictures do it justice? That's the question. Well, it's not bad. Try to fold this out a bit so I can bloody stand it up. Come on. This is pretty stiff. Come on. Here we go. Right. So, yes, it doesn't look too bad. A little bit of dirt and crap in there, but we split a bit of that. It's a little bit scratchy, I think. Oh no, it's just a scuff, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, and you can see from the labelling on the front, it's got the newer logo, which means it's a later unit, which is awesome. And that feels fine. So, so you've seen me unpack it, you don't, I've got no idea if this thing even works properly, at least. And the pictures showed it working. So I'm hoping that there's no issues with it. I don't. I didn't want. I didn't buy it to repair it. I bought it to use it. Um, voltage settings. Voltage settings, Scotty. Um, hmm. I need to check on that before I carry on. I think it's automatic. 
don't want to get that wrong. So we're going to go and check the manual. And I'll come right back. Okay, I've just verified that yes, it's automatic power supply, so it doesn't actually require any manual switch selections for the input, which is great. It simplifies things a little bit. So let's plug this thing in. And let's see what actually happens. Fingers crossed. It's just uh, make sure you can actually see this a little bit. Let's move this around. Adjustments here, right? make it easier. There we go. Put in this marginally better. All right. Okay, you have power. You have the display lighting up. It looks bright enough. It's not super bright, but it's fine. And uh, well, that looks like it's moderately successful, at least. So let's stick some leads in there and see what we get out of it, shall we? Um, how should I test this? Let's see. <coughs> hmm. What leads to use? I think I might just grab these. These are my bench power supply. I just use these. This will do. It's a bit bodgy, but um, yeah, it's just a nice, simple way to connect it out. So I want to measure. So one of the voltage checks to start with to see how accurate that is. <coughs> so I'm millivolts DC anyway, so that's already default to volts. I might even be able to shove it straight into the terminals. Let's have a look. Channel 1, channel 2, but actually grab it or not, I wonder. Right, well, it's reading half a volt. I don't know if you can actually see my spell. You can see there's a wipe in there. It's just. Uh, Right, so doing half a volt on here, and that's basically what I'm getting here. Don't think it was a turn on supply, I don't know how accurate this display is on here. I really should check that actually, um, see how accurate that is relative to measurements. This is creeping up slightly, so it's supposed to have a um, one hour warm up time apparently. So let's do some checks on here, eh? let's do voltages, yeah, 10 volts. 10 and a half volts, so I've got there 20 and a half volts, 30 and a half volts. Yeah, so it's actually wasn't linear. Um, so that's just under 10 and a half, just over 20 and a half, just over 30 and a half, just over. River it's the power supply, river it's the meter. I honestly don't know at this stage. But at least that actually looks like it's um, moderately accurate. So that's a good start. At least it seems to be reading that correctly. I don't have any AC voltage references I can use, unfortunately. Um, oh, maybe I could use my wave generator. On my scope. I might be able to use that as an AC source, actually. Yes, I shall look at that. I'll pause this and come back. Okay, so I've got some of my calibration gear out. This box here has got a uh, 10 megahertz um, tempered compensated crystal oscillator in it, which has got a divider network in it as well. Um, so this is currently on a 10 kilohertz output. This is set to frequency. I've got it clipped together on alligator leads, which is not ideal, but it works fine. And getting exactly 10 kilohertz. So the frequency on there looks good. Um, next one, this is 100 kilohertz. Yep, that's showing exactly 100 kilohertz. One megahertz. Oh, can't get it. Can't get it. I don't know what the top end of this thing is actually supposed to be, but it can't read one megahertz anyway. So, I don't know what that's doing. Um, actually, it might be able to measure AC off this input jack, actually. Let's see if I'm tweet cheat and use that, eh? Um, AC volts, AC volts, here we go, push the right button, there we go, 270 millivolts, so it's actually reading that, okay, I don't know if it's actually accurate or not, 98, yeah, I can't read that, so, I can't read that one either, that's not surprising though, so what I'll do is I'll hook that up onto my um, generator, 
also a diode and sounder mode diode test sounder so so that's nice and fast good nice responsive which is really nice um, I'm going to hook this up onto my scope first then I'll go and find some parts for some other tests so AC, uh, AC Vox <coughs> I've got some other calibration things here which I'll show you in a second ok, wave generator frequency 100 kilohertz. actually I'll probably find out what the top level of this thing is on frequency too so this is slightly out. I know this scope doesn't actually have it at bang on frequency. I'm, I'm actually really tempted to pull it apart and tune it because it bugs me a little bit because I know the readout isn't bang on compared to the other test gear I've got. I know the scope is wrong. Um, if it had a 10 megahertz input on the back, it'd be really easy. I'll just plug one in, but it doesn't have one, which is a shame. Anyway, so that's one kilohertz. I'll make sure we know it's out. Um, and I'm running at uh, 990 millivolts peak to peak. So, what's that an IMS? Mm, good question. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Anyway, it's reading that, so it's just um, adjust the frequency down. I just want to find out what spring cinema is actually. So let's go up. Just going to go up. I just want to find out where its limit is. It's 950 kilohertz here. Now see it's topped out there. 900 kilohertz. 910. So it looks like 999 kilohertz is probably its limit. One hundred and ninety kilohertz, one megahertz. Yes, yeah, it's right there. One megahertz, go one point one or one point oh one or something. Yeah, that's it. This is limit. So it's like one megahertz is its upper limit for frequency, which is absolutely fine. Um, I didn't want it for frequency scanner anyway, but I'm actually happy that it's, what I'm seeing is is that it's very accurate. So it's actually good in itself. Um, an AC voltage I want to test, but I have to figure out how I'm going to do this as a um, uh, as a uh, well, IMS value. I can't do an IMS value on this, I don't think. I don't believe I can. No, it's always going peak to peak. And you want to stuck on bother looking out, so yeah. Anyway, it's working, and that's the main thing there. Um, let's just go to that there and let's all crank it up. Six volt peak to peak on there, two point one two volts. RMS on there. Uh, I don't know. I've actually looked, read the manual for this properly. I don't actually know the functions on it. It might well be able to, to compensate for that, but. Um, Anyway, it's reading AC volts, wherever it's right, uh, who knows. Um, let's hook up my other unit, actually. My trusty little Vichy. Um, which surprisingly, well, it's a cheap little Chinese thing, actually works quite well. Can you see that? You can. Right. Um, let's, let's probe it with this and see what this thinks about the AC voltage. Let's see if it agrees with the float. When I've done measurements on this before, it's been really close to the float meters. Um, really close within a couple of counts. So it's given 2.1, that's 2.12. So, yeah. And that could be frequency based, uh, if I reduce the frequency right down. Right down. It probably is a fast way of doing this, but. Yeah. that helps. Uh, it's not liking that there is it? It's um, 
chop it up and place some of these reeds. Should probably go for like 50 hertz or something, shouldn't I? Yeah, let's go for higher frequency. I, went, I think I went too low. I was going down to fractions of hertz. Yeah, 50 hertz, that should be a nice, reliable measurement reading. Um, and now they both actually agree, they're both 2.12 plus or minus a little bit, you know, third decimal place. So, okay, I'm confident the AC is working correctly. Um, resistance measurement, that's the next thing I want to check. Shut this down. I actually have a, um, some Vichet resistors here. Precision resistors, which I've used for various things, just for calibration, you know, reference checks. Um, you, know, you can't really get much better than these things, really, not easily. They're fairly expensive. Um, obviously, there's only two wire resistance measurements, whereas my HP up here is four wire, and I've also got a Fluke A8842A, which is also four wire, so I can do much more accurate readings. Um, but for the purpose of this, this would be good enough. I mean, it's just to see if or not it's ballpark right, really. I don't need that super accuracy. I just need it to be close to right. So this is a 20 ohm resistor. Measuring 20.28. So this is zero that out. Stick it on there. So, yeah, that's pretty close. Um, relative. There we go. So zero that against that one. 20.03 here. You know, it could be again relative to that setting. It's got a slight variation, here, isn't it? It's not sure how accurate it can be. So 20.04. So it's 0.04. This is 0.1% accuracy, so that's pretty close. Um, Let's try this one. It's already zeroed, but let's verify it. Which I've got connections on here. Stick it on there. That's 15 ohms exactly. And this is a 15 ohm 0.01% resistor. So, yep, that's fine. Cannot see anything wrong there with that resistance range at least. So I'm happy with that so far. Over here is a DC reference. Since I just used my bench meter before, that's a high voltage. This is live voltage. Um, the voltage is you can do on the back here. So I'll hook up to this and I shall see um, what this thinks. Um, as far as accuracy goes. Let's hook onto these. Not exactly right for this job, but that's 2.5 volts reference. Obviously, it's only just turned on, so it's probably not stabilized properly, but it's going to be close enough. So, 2.49829, 2.4984, so 0.1 out, 0.11, oh, sorry, 0 0.11, 0 0.000. 000 1, 1 out. But who knows what the rounding's doing. So okay. So it's um try five volts. That says five volts exactly. This is four point triple nine four four. So it's point zero 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 five six out with rounding. I mean that's still pretty good accuracy. My other flu could read it accurately, but it's much closer. Again this is still warming up. It's it's you know it's, it's not 20 degrees in here so it probably is going to be slightly different. Okay so this is a 7.5 volt and I've got 7.49567 which is yeah, six to seven, so it's rounding up. So it's probably about 0 0.001 out, roughly. Okay, and 
and try and ten volts. I mean, accuracy on this is by far, you know, it's it's well within what I needed to do. So ten volts is nine point nine nine six, nine nine seven. Uh, yeah, I mean, come on, can I increase that? No, I can't. Um, so yeah, that's like point oh oh one. That's one significant thing. I mean, oh, just oh. fine. That's absolutely fine. I'm happy with that. So it looks like the meter I purchased is working okay. It's got other functions which I haven't tested yet. Um, current ranges, for example, which I can look at doing. I just have to set that up first. Okay, I'll just set this up for current testing with my power supply here. Um, it's literally just plugged in across the output of the power supply. This is current limited anyway. Um, and so we have a current I set on here, it should be close at least to what's on here. It's got a 10 amp connection, which is brilliant. Um, the other fluke I've got, I think, was only 2 amps. Yeah, there's only 2 amps you could put on that one. Um, my HP can do 3 amps. And really those aren't enough, which is actually one of the reasons I bought the Vici ones, because it's got a 20 amp um, connection. I think it can really do 20 amps, but you know, anyway. Um, so it's got 10 amps on here, which is brilliant. Um, it does have the second display on here too. Really should try using that. See what comes up. <coughs> yes. All these features I'm not going to use yet. I have to figure that out. So, I've got the current limiting set of 30 milliamps. And, well, it says 31 there. I'm getting 32 on the fluke. Um, so if I come over here and just change that, increase it slightly. 50 milliamps, 100 milliamps, there you go, 200 milliamps, 300, 400, 5, yeah, let's go a bit more, eh? 1 amp, yeah, I don't know, this cable's going to probably take a couple of amps, so I probably can't go too high with it. Um, okay, let's go 1.5 amps. Yep, two amps. I can hear the power supply starting to work. Two and a half amps, three amps. Right, three point five, four amps, four point five, five amps, five point one amps. There you go. So yep, that's looked absolutely fine. Let's wind it back down again. Don't want to leave it set high. So that's it. That's all good. Um. So the DC current works as well. I shall check the um, 100 milliamp side actually as well. Let's just um, reduce that current limit down. I don't want to blow it straight away. 100 milliamps. And let's see what we get there. Hmm. Not showing any current. A fuse might already be blown. Yeah. That fuse might already be gone. There's no current flowing. So this fuse has probably popped. Let's have a look in here, shall we? Hmm. Might, be, might not even be a fuse in it, but I feel of it. I want to come out in a hurry. Come on. Let's just try and get into this. No fuse. Okay. That explains why that doesn't work. Not a big deal. I'll just go and get a fuse. Okay, it's a new fuse installed. Let's try it. Here we go, milliamps. Beautiful, 11.2. So it is actually doing what it's supposed to do. All right, um, there you go, I'm changed by this level here. So let's go down. Yeah, it's milliamps I'm adjusting by there. Let's think for a second there. So yes, that's milliamps, one milliamp, two milliamps. I mean, it's gonna be a slight difference depending on accuracy. This is probably more accurate than this, this level. 
that's it's tying in at least. Um, yeah, I'll do 40 milliamps on there, 41. So there's a slight difference in um, reading. I'm not sure which one's more accurate. I expect the fluke will be. 80 milliamps, 90 milliamps, 99, 100 milliamps. I've got a 500 milliamp fuse in there as per the rating. That says 100 milliamps on there, but it's actually doing more than that. Let's see what it will cope with, shall we? So it will actually do 200 milliamps. So, okay, that's enough of that. Right. Interesting, it's showing this negative reading. Must just be some. Um, it must just be some drag on the uh, on the power supply side there. See, it's actually got a negative. It must just be a slight imbalance in the power supply. So anyway, that's uh, that's all looking good. This this um, second display is there. I just don't know how to use that yet. Um, yeah, I really just I need to figure that out. Sounds like it actually toggles between DC and AC. You can hear relays clicking when it's doing dual display on that one. Yeah. Still showing milliamps. Not doing it, amps. Is that a bug I just found then? Right that on. DC amps, second screen on, DC volts, it still says milliamps DC. So okay, it's monitoring voltage and current at the same time. Pretty cool. Here we go. I'll do the second display on that one. I should say I think I should be able to get that to do AC AC volts. Maybe. Oh, to use the right digits first. AC, here we go. I should measure AC ripple on the DC supply. In theory, um, it's right. Yeah, it's right. Fly on. That's doing 10 volts right now. And this is a linear power supply, so it should be fairly clean. Um, yes, yeah, it's showing 0.16 millivolts AC ripple, which is what I wanted it for. So you can actually do two measurements at once. So you do measure the DT supply, you can probe it with this and check the ripple content at the same time, you know, which is the main reason I wanted it. So it might show up faults more obviously. Um, normally, when I was probing with a normal my DaVinci there, which works quite well, um, then. Um, it's uh, it may not actually show me that there's any AC there unless I actually specifically check for that. So at least this will allow me to check for that much more easily because it's right there in front of you. So awesome! I'm happy with that. It all seems to be working okay. Um, at least I haven't found any issues with it. Hold seems to work. Don't know, turn it back off again, but it's here. <laughs> <coughs> oh. oh, I want the sickness to go away. There we go. Um, yeah, so beautiful. That, that was that was good. I got that quite cheaply too, really, um, compared to what I was going to pay for the one from Germany. The one from Germany was much more expensive. I think I got this about hundred dollars less in the end. Um, but then that was unknown condition. So luckily, it seems to be okay. So I'm happy.